Putin has made it clear that he plans to protect Traor at all cost. Captain Ibrahim Traore of Burkina Faso has made significant strides since assuming leadership in September 2022. His tenure has been marked by decisive actions against terrorism, efforts to reclaim land, and the initiation of anti-corruption campaigns. Traore has also taken bold steps in foreign policy, severing ties with France while courting Russia, all amidst a challenging transition to civilian administration. Despite these accomplishments, there remain individuals and factions determined to undermine his leadership. In this video, we will delve into the most recent attempt on Traore's life and its aftermath, as well as discuss Russia's role in Africa. Before continuing, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for updates on African affairs. Following reports of gunshots near the presidential residence last month, hundreds of protesters rallied in the capital to express their support for Burkina Faso's military government. The protesters gathered at a central roundabout in Ouagadougou, vowing to uphold President Traoré's government. They claimed that shots had been fired near the presidential residence earlier that afternoon. Although the details were unclear, they were present to prevent any harm from befalling their leader. The Burkina Faso news agency, AIB, reported that an individual had attempted to attack a guard at the palace, but there were no injuries or damage. Nevertheless, security forces promptly closed off access to the area around the palace. Since the ousting of elected president Rockmark Christian Cabaret by mutinying soldiers in 2022, Burkina Faso has been under military rule. Traoré's resolve to advocate for his people and nation has made him a target for those who oppose his leadership. Russia has been reinforcing its ties with Burkina Faso, making it highly unlikely that Captain Ibrahim Traoré will be ousted by a coup. Russia is committed to maintaining stability in the region, as evidenced by the recent visit of Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov. Earlier this month, Lavrov pledged increased support to Burkina Faso in its fight against militant groups, underscoring Russia's intention to fill the void left by the region's traditional Western partners. During a press conference in Ouagadougou, Lavrov highlighted Russia's growing influence in West Africa. This visit was part of his broader tour of Africa, which included stops in Guinea and the Republic of Congo. Amid Moscow's full-scale invasion of Ukraine, Russia is keen to build alliances and garner support from African nations, many of which have expressed dissatisfaction with their long-standing Western allies, such as France and the United States. Lavrov stated that Russian instructors are already working in Burkina Faso and their numbers will increase. He emphasized Russia's ongoing commitment to supplying military equipment to bolster Burkina Faso's defense capabilities and assist in eliminating remaining terrorist groups. Lavrov also expressed gratitude for Burkina Faso's objective and fair stance on the conflict in Ukraine, reaffirming Russia's support for Africans striving to free themselves from neo-colonial control. Under Captain Ibrahim Traore's leadership, Burkina Faso has significantly strengthened its military cooperation with Russia. Seeking Moscow's support in its fight against armed groups, this partnership is set to continue for at least the next five years as Burkina Faso's military regime has extended its rule under an accord adopted during national consultations. Countries across the Sahel, a region stretching from Senegal to the Red Sea, are increasingly turning to Russia for security assistance. In recent years, Facing growing regional instability, Russian mercenaries have supported the armed forces of Burkina Faso and Mali in their fight against insurgent groups. Now, Russia is intensifying its focus on the region by strengthening its influence over several Sahel states and seeking new partnerships further afield. This strategy could set it against other world powers, with the next battleground potentially being the coastal West African states. Russia aims to secure military, diplomatic, and economic pacts with leaders of these nations in exchange for strategic access to the Atlantic Ocean. This approach mirrors how the U.S. military base in Djibouti, Camp Lemonnier, provides the U.S. with strategic access and control in the Persian Gulf, Indian Ocean, and Suez Canal. Under President Xi Jinping, China has also worked hard to expand its influence on the continent. Russia and China engage with African countries in different ways. Russia uses military and diplomatic incentives while China employs developmental projects and heavy debt to draw African allies. The U.S. and Russia are at odds over their influence in Africa, reflecting a renewed struggle for partitioning the continent among major and emerging world powers, potentially leading to proxy wars. The U.S. decreased its engagement with Africa, 
particularly with its 2018 decision to reduce counterterrorism efforts despite the growing threat of terrorism in many African countries. This coincided with Russia's return to the continent as Moscow moved quickly to fill the security gap and strengthen its reputation as a dependable strategic partner. Russia secured military contracts and agreements with various countries. President Putin hosted the first Russia-Africa summit in 2019 in Sochi, which saw the attendance of 17 African heads of state. The second summit in July 2023, despite war, sanctions, and Western pressure, resulted in various agreements on preventing an arms race in space, cooperating in information security, and fighting terrorism. Moscow also pledged to write off further debt and deliver grain to six African countries. In November of the previous year, Russia's agriculture minister announced that Moscow had begun free shipments of grain, totaling up to 200,000 tons, to six African countries, as promised by President Putin. It is important to note that Burkina Faso, a landlocked nation of 20 million, has been devastated over the past eight years by violence from extremist groups loosely affiliated with Al-Qaeda and the Islamic State group, as well as by fighting between government forces and militants. In less than 10 months, the country experienced two coups, the second of which occurred in September 2022 when military leaders expelled French personnel and sought security assistance from Russia. The leaders have struggled to manage the humanitarian and security situation. However, Burkina Faso's military leaders received a new consignment of military drones from Turkey earlier this month to aid in the fight against terrorism. Additionally, for the second consecutive year, Burkina Faso has topped the list of the most overlooked crises in the world, according to the Norwegian Refugee Council. The relief agency reports that 6.3 million out of 20 million people, many of whom are starving, will require humanitarian assistance this year. There are still 2 million internally displaced individuals, with about 60% being children, and few resources are available to assist those who have experienced trauma. In a move away from Russia, Senegal's new president began his first visit to Mali and Burkina Faso last month to strengthen ties with these two states, which have left the regional bloc ECOWAS. Mali, Burkina Faso, and Niger are all under military rule following coups, and these three countries declared in January that they were leaving ECOWAS to form the Alliance of Sahel States, their own regional organization. Diem visited Mali's capital and met with Colonel Asimi Goita, the leader of the military government, before visiting Burkina Faso to see Ibrahim Traoré. This collaboration suggests that Russia will have an influence in Senegal. Russia's backing of Ibrahim Traoré is a topic of debate, with some seeing it as a strategic move to increase influence in the region, while others view it as a show of unity and solidarity with a leader who shares their principles. Regardless of the motivations, this partnership has significant implications for both Russia and Traoré. With the support of a powerful nation like Russia, Traoré feels more legitimate and secure on the global stage and gains access to resources and expertise that can help him promote economic growth and political stability. However, it is essential to consider the potential long-term consequences of this assistance. While the partnership may benefit Traoré in the short term, its impact on the nation and its people remains uncertain. Do you think there will be any problems between Russia and Burkina Faso in the future? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Turn on notifications to get updates whenever we upload videos like this. Thanks for watching and see you in our next video.